Hey, this one's just a theory, but hear me out, all right? Or, or go, but you're staying, so hear me out. I've got to disclaim the soul within a cis binary. You have to contextually take cis binary gender seriously to tune into this one. So within a cis binary, there are two genders. They are known as men's and women's, and they are expected to be homosocial. Homosocial, you see, like, like homosexual, but with social, when your social life is primarily with people of the same gender, and that makes heterosocial when your social life is primarily with people of another gender. I think you can recognize that as a cultural standard. Men are expected to have male friendship groups, and if they're friends with women, then that's a romantic interest. And the respective binary inverse for women. I'd like to say that this is becoming less true. I'd like to say that, I can't be sure. I know I seem fucking obsessed with gender. And it's really ironic because I'm not interested in having or performing a gender. And that makes me culturally a, a gender person. When, when that's exactly what, what I don't want. It's just, no, why? So, of course, I was raised in the, the male way, the, the, the boy thing, the, the man's, and I'm generally perceived to be male. It has long been presumed, and is like contemporarily presumed, that my social group would be primarily male. And that's not proven to be the case. I largely have female friends and non-binary. As far as that stretcher is concerned, I am strangely heterosocial. And this is seen as strange and subversive social behaviour in contrast to my presumed gender role. I, I have had plenty of male friends, I've just got along more and more closely with women. And I, I guess it's more notable in contrast to presumed homosociality. The female equivalent would of course be a woman who gets on more with men. And the thing is, I know a lot of those women. I have been told by such women that part of the experience is all of your male friends fancying you at some point, but the women that I'm mainly friends with, that, that's those women who are mainly friends with men. And that's a bit counterintuitive because you'd kind of presume mathematically that if I'm not part of male culture, then I'm implicitly part of female culture and the women who are not part of female culture become part of male culture. That definitely does happen to some extent. You get the girl who's just one of the boys who was popularized in the UK under the term ladette. And the male equivalent, I guess the stereotype, is the gay best friend who's part of the female social group. The, the one exception in a large social group. But I'm not necessarily talking about social group gatherings here. I'm talking multiple individual friendships that don't much overlap. And I think there's an important reason why people like me and people like my female friends specifically get along. It's not the same as Ladette and Gay Best Friend. Because whether we're conscious of it or not, we are rejecting gendered social culture. I'm specifically rejecting the masculine gendered social culture because that's the one that was presumed of me, but not necessarily embracing the feminine one. Girls in this category might be called tomboys. There's not really a male inverse for that, or if there is, then it's a pretty offensive slur because, of course, femininity is offensive. Or any perceived lack of masculinity where there apparently should be some is offensive. And that social minority status is a kind of parallel to queer identity. It's not necessarily queer identity. It will probably often overlap with queer identity. And I think a lot of the queer community is a kind of conglomeration of lots of people who reject gendered identities. But there have always been people who are naturally heterosocial in this context. Really, I think it's more natural than the homosocial because that's a 
presumed categorization that's railroading someone into a cultural pocket, whereas a heterosocial outlook, or at least bisocial, pansocial, omnisocial, asocial, megalosocial, macrosocial, sociosocial, anthrosocial, polysocial. I've really forgotten where I was going. I think it's important to recognize that that category of people exists, and the boys and the girls and everyone else in that category have a lot in common, despite what it might seem. What they, what we have in common, is not having been gendered in the social context. It's, it is a lack of something that we have in common. But that lack contrasts strongly with societal norms. Let's do that diagram again. This boy, or this assigned blue node, doesn't really fit here in the blue. I don't just mean that men like the men's football or whatever, it's not just interests, it's character, it's manner of communication. Where can this lost node go? To the pink? You know, he doesn't necessarily fit there either. That's full of prescribed interests and manners too. But guess what, fucker? We were zoomed in all this time to an unnecessary binary, and heterosocials find themselves and each other on the outside. It's not necessarily a willful act of rebellion, it's how we are. In this way, there are three socialities. Male homosocial, female homosocial, and the socially non-binary, the heterosocials. These are all very metaphysical concepts, you know, it's just what we believe it is, but what we believe it is programs a lot of how culture works. And if we think more around that, then we can escape the limits of it. And this is just a shout out to my heterosocial and bisocial allies. I see ya.